Chapter 11. Um, sorry for leaving you on a cliffhanger. Oh, there's no... Uh, sorry for leaving you on a cliffhanger. I meant to record these earlier, but, like, I have no idea. Like, I just, like, didn't sit down and do it. But now I'm sitting down and doing it. So there we go. After what felt like an eternity of running for Sandra, Felicia stopped and turned to make sure that the Syndicate was still with her. Lampiria and Laura were still holding on for dear life to the Prugly, her amazing speed making them fear the possibility of being unable to hang on and falling to the ground hard. I think... I think this is far enough, Felicia said, a little breathless. Carefully, she placed Lampiria and Laura on the ground. Are you all all right? I'm sorry if I was too fast. It's okay, Lampiria said. That was fun. I only thought I was going to die three or five times, so it's fine, Laura said. Sandra was too out of breath to respond, so he just gave a thumbs up. Good. All right, Felicia said, nodding. Um, I'm going to get back to Nikki and Ari. I'm so sorry you got caught up in this. I'm so, so sorry. Do you think you could give us the short version of what the heck was going on? Laura asked. Just, like, one or two sentences. Basically, Felicia began, sighing. Aura and Nikki, they're... She shook her head and started over. Nikki and Aura made their teams around the same time, and during both of our first days, we ran into each other. There was this huge fight, and... Aura basically won't stop until Nikki disbands the team. I'm still confused, Laura said. I know, and it is confusing, Felicia said, but I'm not really able to expound upon it more than that. It's just Nikki believes that Aura can do good, and he doesn't want to take his team away from him, but maybe... Felicia's voice kept trailing off. She clearly had no idea how to quite explain what was going on. I guess I really... Don't have to explain that they don't get along, huh? She said, trying to joke, but the clueless look on Team Searchlight's faces made her made her frown again. Oh, um, Swiper and Zangus, they don't tend to get along, Felicia explained. And it's more complicated than that, obviously, but... Sandra managed to finally form words, despite the burning in his lungs from running. What I'm getting from this is that this isn't our fight. No, it's not. That's why I got you guys out of there as fast as I could, Felicia said. Let us adults figure this out. She smiled, trying to reassure the three. You rookies just get home and get some rest. We'll all see you around in the future, definitely. Be careful, Lampere said. You guys are really nice. You don't deserve to have to fight. Thank you, Felicia said. And no, but it's just the way that things are. And I'm going to support Nikki no matter what. So, I'm going to go back and help, if that's all right. Sandra nodded. We'll be okay, I think. He turned to his teammates. Does anyone know where we are? I can get us home from here, Laura said. Don't worry about it. All right, then. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. All right, then. Sandra turned back to Felicia. Looks like we'll be okay. You do what you have to do. See you later, Felicia, Lampere said. Make sure to tell Nikia and Ari that it was nice to meet them, and I hope we run into each other again soon. I will, Felicia said. Thank you. It was great to meet you all. She nodded again, feeling bad about leaving them, but having no other choice. See you around, she said, and then ran off. I'm still worried, Lampere said, turning to her teammates. I wanted to seem strong for Felicia, but... I definitely could have helped, at least, Laura said, crossing her arms. Sandra wasn't sure what to say. As much as he wanted to help Nikki and his team, perhaps it was better that they sat this battle out. I guess it'll be all right. Laura said. It sounds like they do this a lot. You're right, Lampira said. We should hear from them soon, and it'll all be all right. Exactly, so let's not worry. We should work on getting back home, like Felicia's, Felicia wanted us to, Sandra said. I'll lead the way, Laura said, going on ahead. Hey, Sandra, did you know you could run that fast, or was that the first time that you tried that? Lampira asked, following Laura. Sandra walked with her. No, I had no idea. Sandra replied. Though after pondering it for a moment, he said, I feel like I figured I could, so maybe? It didn't seem impossible. I thought that maybe if I tried, I would be okay. And I guess it was. That's so cool! Maybe you were able to run really fast. Maybe you being able to run really fast would be another way that someone could recognize you, Lampiri said. Maybe, Sandra answered. 
Any second now this will be over. Either Felicia will show up and get his attention, or he'll finally keel over from the poison and I can strike her down when she does arrive, before she has a chance to react. I keep planning this out in my head, my inner monologue helping drown out the pounding of my heart in my ears. He slashes at another tree, not the one I'm behind. I hear it as sharply as if it were, however. It almost makes me jump. I want to turn to check on his location, but I find myself frozen. My back is firmly pressed against this tree. I have my dagger flat against my chest, gripped tightly in my left hand. I'm ready to strike. He's shambling around more. Don't think I can't smell you, he says. That scent still makes my blood boil. This was entertaining before, when he was getting his fur matted over fighting me one-on-one. -on -one. I get an enjoyment out of seeing his true colors then. But this? This is beyond even me. I find no amusement in this. I have no upper hand here. I can't manipulate him when he's out of his mind with toxic boost. What's the fun in that? I take a breath. Another. Another. My breaths are shallow, as not to make too much noise. I say nothing. You can't hide from me forever, the beast screams, slashing another tree. This time the noise is further away. I jump either way. So Viper scum, show yourself. Carefully, carefully, I peer out from behind the tree. He's not looking in my direction. His vision is probably so blurry at this point that he would have only seen me if he were looking directly at me. He looks like shit. His hand is against the tree that he stuck, leaning on it to keep himself upright. The fur on his tail is matted. The look in his eyes tells me that there's nothing of him left. Just violence. And again, not the fun kind of just violence. My eyes fall to Gakorio and Velissa, those dumbasses. Velissa had the misfortune of waking up during my demented game of hide-and-seek with the beast. She didn't last very long, a crushed claw sending her right back to the ground. Gakorio tried defending her, but he too was struck down. A fool's errand. He knows sudden movements trigger the beast to strike. It's just me now. It's only a matter of time. I duck back behind the tree right in time before I hear him hobbling along again. His steps get closer. 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 He strikes the tree I'm hiding behind. I feel like a pussy. I almost had to cover my mouth to keep from screaming. I know you're there, he says. He must be waiting to strike for an ebb in the pain he's feeling so he can pop around the corner and do his worst. Nikia, please, I cry, trying to sound pathetic. It comes off much more genuine than I would have liked. I'd like to retain some dignity. I'm your brother! He thinks about what I said and he screams like his humanity was trying to come back. It amuses me for a second. He almost sounded like himself from our battle with his pretend fight of good versus evil in his head that he always has when we battle. He then hacks up a lung, barely able to breathe through his coughing. Naturally, his senses didn't return. All that was there in his head was the beast. Brother, how could one of you be my brother? He asks me. I ask myself that a lot, I think. I must be cracking jokes in my head just to cope. Nicky, a voice cries. That's Felicia. Right on cue. The beast is distracted. N Nahi? Felicia says, her voice barely above a whisper. I don't have to see her expression to know what she's looking like right now. She can tell just by looking at him that something happened, but she can't figure out how. Even if she had more than two brain cells to rub together, she would have never been able to rationalize how Nahi got poisoned. Team Suspiro knows better than that, she's probably thinking. <laughs> yeah, you'd think so, right? Hikario is such a fuck-up. He probably turned to her. Who are you? He asks. Nihia, she says as calmly as she can. Look at me. It's Felicia. Your teammate? Nothing clicks with him. He didn't even try that time. Are you with him? He asks. No, I'm with you, she says. She's sounding further away, so they're going to check on that meow stick or getting the satchel to try to stop the beast's rampage with a heel seed. I've always been with you. That's not going to change. I think his focus is completely on her. I get the idea that I can strike him from behind if I wait for the perfect moment. I stay still. A second passes. Another second. Just as I'm about to jump out to strike, Felicia lets out a blood-curdling scream. 
I peer out, expecting to see a goddamn bloody mess, a scene of gore and red. But surprisingly, Felicia was still alive. She had her arms covering her body and face. She was half bent forward, scrunched up to shield more of her body and protect her vital organs. The beast looked posed to strike, but he had stopped. He seemed stunned by the sudden noise. Nahia, stop! She pleaded. She sounded close to tears. He cried out from pain again. Or maybe internal conflict? All the noise startled Arioris, who woke slowly. When he remembered what was going on, though, he snapped awake and immediately got to his feet. Felicia, are you all right? He, was, he wasn't all that close to Felicia or Nihia, so he couldn't rush to her side, not without getting sliced in half by reflex from the beast. Nihia was the only reply that Felicia could offer. I thought I saw stirring. Felissa Fel looks around, and then she sees me. Her beautiful orange eyes are full of fear. I lock eyes with her, trying to look confident. I nod at her, and she seems to understand what I mean. It's time for our backup plan. Author's note, there's a typo. I can't fix it. Oh, well. The fear leaves her gaze, and her stunning confidence returns. Carefully, slowly, she starts a belief tornado with just one hand, moving it around gracefully to get the wind started for the attack, as opposed to both of her arms. This meant the attack would take longer to start up, but even being able to start the attack in that way alone was so impressive. She's truly talented. If only she weren't such a bitch. Arioris tries to hold the beast still with Psychic, but nothing besides his own poison is going to stop his rampage. He breaks free without even flinching. Naturally, that causes Arioris pain. I dart from tree to tree, hiding for a moment before ending up as close as I could get to Velissa. Felicia and Arioris were too focused on their teammate to do anything else. Felicia slowly, ever so slowly, reached her hand into the satchel for that heel seed. Or a blast seed. Wouldn't that be funny? It'd certainly be enough to knock him out. She was digging around for it, but couldn't find it from touch alone. Melissa couldn't turn her back to check on me. She has to trust that I'm ready. I am. I'd never let her down like that. She uses Leaf Tornado, catching Arioris, Felicia, and the Beast off guard. I launch a flamethrower directly into the winds. The leaves in the wind burn away, but they and the wind itself kindle a great inferno that envelops Team Coconut and the Beast. Is... is that it? Felissa asked, barely audible. <clears throat> the attack took a moment to clear, but once it did, Felicia and Nihia were on the ground, and Arioris was slumped against a tree, though sitting mostly upright, seemingly KO'd. Aura stepped into the clearing exa and examines... I should say the three, sorry. Examine the three. He lifted Felicia's arm to take a look at her face. He inspected Arioris for a moment, too. He turns attention to Nihia finally, going over to him and kicking him over onto his back. The beast has been vanquished, Aura said triumphantly, laughing. And thus, we've finally achieved victory over Team Akokanon. Can I talk now? Gokorika said. Aura nearly jumped, his nerves still shot from before. Shit, you bastard! Were you just playing dead? Only for a minute, Gokorika said, sitting up. Felissa told me to keep quiet. Exactly, and thanks to that, we've won, Felissa said, standing up as well. She crossed her arms to keep her hands from shaking. No thanks to you, Kikorio, Aura said. What the hell were you thinking? I'm sorry, Kikorio said. Kikorio cried. He stood up too. Whatever. We'll talk about this later. For now, I just want to gloat a little, Aura said. Shifting the focus away from that horror show to something more pleasant seemed good for his mental health at the moment. Did you get your speech prepared? Felissa asked. Aura couldn't tell if she was being sarcastic or not, so he chose to take it at face value. No. But it would be lovely if you could help me if I forget to mention anything, he replied. Felissa huffed, but said nothing. You're such a creep, you know that? Aura and his teammates turned to the voice. Arioris, who was still on the ground, was wide awake. Felissa, from a panicked reflex, used seed bomb. Though well, it was, as usual, blocked by Arioris using barrier. He pushed himself to his feet with psychic and grabbed the team tightly with it. Aura! Felissa cried. Do something! Much like last time, Aura couldn't move his arms to start a night slash attack. You first! Green energy started to surround Arioris. That was clever, that combination attack. Luckily I wasn't quite in the center, or you would have had your victory. 
I actually didn't think you'd buy me playing dead like that, though. Oh, just get it over with, Aura shouted. Maybe this time really will be your last. Ariara smirked. Yeah, he had hopes, all right. He lifted his ears, revealing a green eye-like pattern on the underside of his ears that he kept down. It was only visible for a split second before the area immediately in front of him was blasted with Psychonova, an attack of intense psychic energy that shone bright green and enveloped the surrounding area in its power.